Okay, so the next thing that we're going to be talking about is the network manager. Now, the network manager is probably one of, if not the most complicated piece of code uh, in this entire um, package. Um, so it can be very complicated to be able to write a network manager in a way that is going to be robust and, and it's going to work well. And so I've taken a lot of that logic and I've tried to simplify it and I've tried to make it in a way that um, should be easy to use. Now, uh, in the documentation, if you look here, I've actually provided a series of network managers pre-configured to um, the example scenes. And so you can take this, these prefabs, make a variant out of it and modify it to the needs of your exact type of game. Um, and it should be pretty close to, to what you need. So the network manager should always be at index zero of your scene. And every index ma in every index manager that I have designed is always in the main underscore scenes. So just like uh, we talked about in the directory setup, um, in, in every uh, directory, let me look in CB games here, every directory, um, you know, whether it's basic local motion or shooter, there's always a pre-built prefabs um, that contains uh, in vector prefabs. But if you look in the scenes directory, there's always a main underscore something. And inside that, um, it's going to contain one of those prefabs. You can you can find that in the pre-built pre -built prefabs uh, section as well. Um, you know, the basic network manager prefab is right here. You can take that and put it in your project. Um, but let's talk about it a little bit. So the network manager, I have uh, set it up in, in the example scenes in such a way that it, it's going to be useful probably 99% of the time for your project uh, with a few tweaks. And that's where that 1% comes in. Um, so um, the don't destroy on load, the way uh, it's written, I mean, this is kind of a, an advanced scenario here, but... Um, if you don't want to destroy your network manager ever for any reason, you would tick this. Now, generally, uh, when you come back to the main scene, like you get disconnected, you you basically want to reset everything. Um, and so that includes uh, this network manager here. And so I have it unticked. Um, and then you could also say persist to offline scene. So that means if when you disconnect um, from the server, you'll get sent to this scene and this network manager will be persisted to this offline scene if you want to do that. Um, the online scene, um, it doesn't additively load uh, when you connect. It, um, it single loads, and so it's not going to be useful in most scenarios. So the thing that you actually want to take advantage of is this additively lo uh, load scenes on join. Uh, these are additional scenes that you want to load on top of the scene that you want to move to. So this scene that you want to move to, if it doesn't exist, or if it's not currently loaded, it's going to load it first, then you move move you to it. So um, that's helpful if you want to basically auto spawn your player and automatically move them to this uh, scene. Um, that's really helpful. Otherwise, you can also just load a series of scenes um, immediately when you join the server if you want to do that for whatever reason but i give you that option um so the network manager is going to take advantage of a series of transports so actually let me pull up that documentation uh mirror transports so yeah if you look at the documentation mirror has a series of transports that you could take advantage of and uh, if we click on you know this kcp transport uh, which is what we're using in here. It uh, tells you exactly what this transport is going to be used for. Um, you know, example, KCP is a fast, reliable protocol to it that can achieve, um, you know, reduced latency. Um, and, you know, it, it could tell you about if it's using TCP or UDP. And, you know, uh, that may matter in some scenarios. So be sure to choose... Uh, a transport that you would like. They have transports that integrate with Steam, with Epic servers, um, AWS, Azure. Uh, so they got they got quite a bit of options. Uh, the way the, what I'm using here is um, it'll work for uh, basically any hosted scenario, but you have to set up the server. Um, so the transport here 
it's referencing this KCP transport here. You have to include a transport layer that's provided by Mirror. That's not written by me. Um, you plug that in here. That'll decide that. The network address, this is mostly for clients. Um, so this is the, the server address. This is that endpoint that you're trying to connect to when you want to connect to a server. And then the port is defined by the um, transport that you're defining uh, in here. And then the max number of connections is the maximum number of, of clients that you want to be able to connect to this server. And then this is great for just automatic cleanup. I would definitely encourage maybe taking advantage of this, but basically if a client isn't doing anything for, uh, I believe this is in seconds, um, if he's not doing anything for 60 seconds, it will automatically disconnect him. Uh, you might want to tweak that to maybe be something like 15 or 30 minutes. Um, but if if you want to uh, take advantage of that, that's that's something that could be very powerful to help uh, keep your server clean and fresh. And then if you need to do any sort of authentication um, with a server, this is more of an advanced scenario. I'm not going to be talking about this in this video. Uh, the player prefab, this should always be a client connection. There's never a reason this should be anything else. Um, but uh, the client connection holds uh, state information about a particular client. And then uh, this auto create player prefab, that, that is uh, going to be automatically generating this player prefab. Uh, honestly, I, I leave it. Um, I, 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 I would say leave this on. I, Maybe there's some scenario you want to turn it off. I give you that option here. I want to say 99% of the time, you're never going to want to touch these two things. Just leave them as is. And this player spawn method, it really doesn't matter because it applies to this player prefab here. And we're not taking advantage of that. What really matters here is the character prefab. So that's like this basic controller here. Um, this, this shooter controller is the character that you want to spawn and be controlled by a particular client. So um, this client will control this uh, character. And um, if you want to have like a, a universal team settings, I'll get into that in a later video. And then the uh, team that you want to um, have them default to when they first spawn. And then when you connect to the server, if you want to automatically spawn that, that character, or you, if you want to manually spawn this character later. And now and for a production scenario, scenario, you want to make sure that debug window is, is disabled. You never want to enable that. Same goes for, for verbose logging. Both of these are for debugging scenarios only. There's never going to be a scenario where you want to, in a production scenario, have any of these enabled. And then we talked about additive loading scenes in the moving scene. Now the jump to point scene here. So if we look in this scene and see, we see jump points, there's starting jump, jump to point, And that's the same as this name. And this starting jump to point is tagged as a network spawn point. So um, this jump to point name will find a particular point with this name that is tagged. Net uh, okay. Let me, let me rephrase that. This is the name of a network spawn point object and a network spawn point is the tag on any game object and it has to have this name and um, it needs to be in the scene that you're moving to. So if you don't define a network spawn point or it can't find this spawn point with this name, it will just move your character to vector three zero of that scene. Um, and then you could also do this based on teams. So you could have this, but have multiple of the same, thi same thing and apply a team component. And then since he is on the blue team, it would only spawn at the, the blue uh, point. And the same goes for here. If this is empty, it's, it's not going to be looking for a team name setting. And then these, the registered spawnable prefabs. So if you ever want to dynamically spawn something and have the server spawn something and make it visible to everyone on the network, it that prefab must be in the network spawnable prefabs. Otherwise, when you spawn it, the server is going to 
uh, look at that spawn prefabs network ID. It's going to grab that, that ID and try to like send that across the network. But other people in the network don't, aren't going to know what that is because it's not registered in the prefab. And so it's going to throw an error and it's probably most likely going to cause your server to crash. So uh, very important to make sure that your prefabs are assigned here. I'm pretty sure in the most recent version of Mirror, they've taken care of so it doesn't crash, but you are going to get an ugly error message. So uh, if you need a little bit more details, be sure to go and uh, read the documentation on the network manager and all the configuration options that I just talked about here. Thanks.